good job of wiping offenses in the past and then going for counterattacks. Maybe if they can line something up with Burnt and Seth Curry, uh, they could go for that. But Rev and Dingle have just been... I, I, st I stand by what I've said you know, over the, the whole weekend, that they've been the best DH win uh, Missweaver combo that we've seen on these Black Curry maps. Uh, I think we can all agree on that after watching some of these games. Uh, it does look like Spen is going to be coming in on the uh, Windwalker Monk, and I really like the Windwalker Monk pick. I think if he's playing Serenity, he's playing that Tiger Eye Brew. Um, it's, a, it's a tank shredder. Basically, it shreds through tanks. Whereas Seth Curry, it's a little bit more difficult for him. Basically, the only time he can kill Rev is if Rev is in a stun. Um, the opposite for Spen is he's going to have high up on on Buama, so just sitting in air form basically the entire time trying to tank through that damage, and with the Tiger Eye Brew and the amount of burst damage you have with Serenity, I could easily see one big crit with Fist of Fury, Rising Sun Kick, and they could take down Balamos with unexpected damage. Alrighty then, so we're going to have Balamos and Rev running into the midfield. This is the first game of the lower bracket finals. Winner will go to the grand finals, loser will be eliminated here. We see Balamos sneaking off to the side, he always seems to find a way through the enemy lines. Once again, he's going to walk into the enemy base. Meanwhile, Rev doesn't have to sneak his way around. He just jumps through the enemy lines, and he has also made it to the enemy base. So both these tanks have achieved their goal in the start here. We're unlikely to see any quick caps. And yeah, pretty standard start for both these teams. Yep, Scuba taking a little bit of damage in the midfield. You definitely don't want to be losing anyone this early on in the match. Scuba will survive. And when you're in these situations where you have sort of a five-man skirmish where it's two healers versus three DPS, Ooh. I was just going to say, I guess it's very unlikely someone falls, but, you know, Burnt, Varen, they prove me wrong, and that's the power of that Fire Mage with the Destruction Warlock. If you can get a greater Power Blast off with a Chaos Bolt, you can just say good night to someone, and it's going to be Camel that sleeps early on. Yeah, I, I actually, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure Burnt didn't even press Infernals in this opening fight. He was holding onto that three-minute cooldown perhaps for a tank push, or some, you know, like when the tanks are actually engaged in the fight, but they still manage to get the kill on my free camel. That's going to give them a slight edge here. Balamos, though, actually, it kind of works out to his disadvantage because my free camel has spawned right where Balamos uh, was running. He chose to run through Graveyard uh, this time, as opposed to Ramp, which we've seen from him in previous attempts. But the Guardian Druid is just as mobile, to be honest, as a Havoc Demon Hunter before that, that buff starts stacking up. The I think at five stacks of the, of the flag carrying... Uh, buff, that's when you lose the increased movement speed. And Balamos is just using travel for me. He actually gets caught up in a hibernate though. Nice little cheeky play coming in from my free camel, but I don't think it's going to lead to too much. Uh, Balamos just able to kite away here. He's so tanky before the stacks uh, start to build up, so he should be just... Yeah, should be. I mean, that was a very nice play by Camel. If camel can keep uh, landing these hibernates consistently in the match. It will be good. You can see Camel moving forward. He's going to be trying to get some damage out right now. I love my dog actually getting bursted down, getting caught in a swap. He vanishes off to escape. Varen Nova's him out. Looking for a greater power blast. Is he going to be able to take him down? This is going to be disastrous. Rogue is such a, an important part of an offense. If he gets taken down, it's going to be disaster. But luckily, Dingle gets there in position to keep him alive. Yeah, Dingle actually is in the offense right now. Seth Curry has a really good transcendence positioning, I believe. He's actually he was right on top of Rev. He has a 1v1 here. If he can catch Rev, there's no healer in support right now. Dingle is on offense. He is now starting to mount back. Doesn't want to risk anything early on here. As Rev has finally been caught, the Ring of Peace. Although good crowd control from Rev denies anything. Honestly, <laughs> I don't think that... Seth Curry has managed to get a single attack on Rev throughout this entire time that he's been in the 1v1, showing that Rev really is a step above these other Demon Hunters. Yeah, he certainly is, but I mean, <laughs> Seth Curry honestly hasn't hit any of these Demon Hunters. That's why I just think it's such a weird <laughs> offensive strategy. I mean, the only thing it really does sending in Seth is force a healer to come back. Yeah. That's it. Other than that, there's really no chance he gets a kill. If he does, it's going to be a complete miracle. Burnt on defense, does manage to snipe a kill on Camel. And now Belamos, Loxatar, Burnt, they're going to be feeling relatively safe. And they're just going to be committing to this five-man defense once again in this matchup. And we haven't seen the same kind of pressure we saw earlier on in the tournament from SX6 against this defensive wall that Belamos has uh, really put up from you know, Debbie so far in this matchup. They're going to have to rethink their strategy in terms of their offensive push. Yeah, I, it, it's a weird situation, right? Because I feel like the Debbies just have 
a worse composition than SX6 had for the offense. I think the Elemental was actually just, it was such a big player uh, for SX6 in taking down um, Alamos when we did see this matchup in the upper finals earlier today. Uh, we see a full wipe now coming out for the Debbies in their offense. This could be a potential opportunity for a counter push from Balamos's team. We saw them try this earlier against SX6. They narrowly uh, they narrowly were able to survive this SX6 when they did go for this counter. And this is Burnt. Burnt has this Infernal Side. I haven't seen him use this ability the entire game. He's probably saving it for the attempt here on Rev. We we'll have to see how he decides to play it. Rev already in pole position to kite. They have to go all the way around the ramp to even get up to his level. And then he can just jump down whilst they're doing it. So hasn't really been forced to use anything yet since Seth Curry doesn't actually do any damage to him. And Seth Curry is already so low once again on this offense that, I mean, I, I just don't know if he'll be able to get anything done here. Oh my goodness, as soon as they get close to Rev, it's Cyclone on Seth, Paralysis on Varen, and then all of a sudden, Rev double leaps away, he's gone, nowhere to be found. Camel just trying to take down Seth. If Camel can take down Seth, this is the perfect opportunity. Burnt has moved in, Varen's moved in as well, and if Seth falls, then it's going to be a scary situation where I, I just don't think they're going to be able to kill without Seth Curry there. Camel, though, could get taken down, and this is not the greatest situation for the Debbies to be in. Rev, this is time for him to run. This is Danger Town, because... Hey, he just lost one of his defenders. Seth Curry, Burnt, Varen, they're going to be feeling relatively confident to push, push forward and try to take down Rev. Meanwhile, Balamos, he's sitting in his base, sitting completely pretty. Hamsham actually abandons Balamos. They're making an all-in offensive push. One of the first times we've really seen this from Team Balamos. Yeah, this is actually, I think everyone is on offense here. Loxatar, uh, both healers for Team Balamos are going for the play here, leaving Balamos completely exposed if they don't get the cap here. This is very, very scary. Rev is doing a fantastic job again, kiting, using the Ring of Peace in the tunnel. It's a move we've seen from them time and time again. As we do see, he's just kiting away. I think they just need to split some offense. We see my free camel in stealth. Now I love my dog. They would see Spend. Balamos, the lone bear in his base three dps on the way no healers in sight this is a scary situation for balamos yeah hamsham he's panicking he's trying to get back but camel's denying him he bashes him throws him in a cycle now balamos he's all alone spen i love my dog what is balamos going to do rev he still has to kite away it's not over for him as well here we How's go look quickly at balamos how's he gonna <laughs> survive this he's just tanking through the damage it's basically a race to the finish at this point hamsham won't be able to reconnect Balamos is surviving, but Rev, he, he's looking like he's going to be fine. He just needs to get in position to cap the flag. Balamos will ultimately fall here. He just has no heals at all, <laughs> and he will die. That was a great peel off by I Love My Dog, by Spin, to get aggressive. And furthermore, Camel getting that crowd control on Hamsham, denying his ability to reconnect was just really, really well done. Yeah, I think the Debbies played that excellently. They instantly read the situation. That Ooh, they got no the flag, though. I, 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 I can't believe they got the flag, actually. I feel like Rev should have easily been on the flag point uh, for the cap there. Maybe his kiting pattern didn't enable him to, since the DPS were on. We'll have to see how he can play this one. He's currently with the flag, very close to the cap. I'm actually trying to see who has it Burn. on the side. Burn has it? Okay, so Burn has it right now. He's trying to cross through the map. If they can get over to him, they will easily land the kill. Can Balamos reconnect? He's in stealth, approaching. He's getting very, very close, but Burn's still stuck in the house right now. Uh, since all the DPS did chase after Balamos, they're not there to get the kill on Burn right now, but they should win the race uh, before Balamos gets there. And I mean, now there's the kill shot. The rogue is connected. It's looking very bad for Team Balamos. Yeah, it definitely is. Rev in the meantime, though, also taking quite a bit of damage. He needs to kite away. Still trying to avoid, are they going to be able to take down Burt? Honestly, I can't really think of a worse flag carry, just not mobile at all. Ultimately, will easily fall. There's massive heals coming in, but this damage is insane from Sven, and I love my dog. Revel on, oh, he's not on the cap. He's not on the point yet. Yeah, not on the point, unfortunately, wasn't able to get there. Flag was picked up once again. Beat Lamos, did he get it? Did Lamos actually get the I, flag? I, is he going to be able to escape? I think Seth Curry has it. I think okay. Seth Curry has it. He used the touch of karma there. They're going to go through that kidney shot. Balamos is running close. Spirit Link commits. Actually, a beautiful transcendence positioning from Seth Curry. This guy has been insane throughout this team. I would say he's been one of the best players on Balamos' team. We know him from the arena tournaments. He's had some fantastic individual performances. And look, Balamos and Loxatar are druids. They have insane mobility. Balamos actually, he falls off 
but Sefco are going to be able to reconnect. There's no one inside. They will swap the flag back over the Druid Mobility coming in clutch, but now it's not over. Balamos is nowhere near his healers right now. Pack Spirit once again. Hamsham getting controlled in the back lines. The Rogue reconnecting. I love my dog. There's a movement speed impairment for this Guardian Druid. I don't think he's going to get out of this one. He might. Loxitar is there to heal him up. Burnt with beautiful peels as well. Just spamming out the fears, trying to get some counter pressure rolling on a spin. You might be able to take him down with this Chaos Bolt. Certainly, Vanamos would be able to survive. Touch of Karma denies that kill. Fear still spam happening onto I Love My Dog. He needs to get a kidney shot. They need some sort of crowd control. Ham Sham now there. Vanamos has done it. They've managed to escape. What a beautiful play, like you said, from Seth Curry to set this up. Vanamos, if he can get back into his base, now it's going to be Rev that's in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, touch of death committed from Seth Curry. He's looking for big damage on Rev. Uber is in the defense, though. It's only two people on offense for Balamos' team right now. I think it's a tough ask for them to land this kill once again. Rev kiting away. He gets away from Scuba, but he's looking for Dingle. Dingle's trying to chase him. Rev without heals currently. The Life Cocoon does connect as two do manage to find each other. Stabilizing temporarily. Seth Curry with the stun forces out Trinket over onto Dingle right now, but with two healers and a 3v2 situation, Rev should be able to survive. Meanwhile, I love my dog, uh, probably going to die here, gets killed off. Loxatar actually with the finishing blow, the Resto Feral Affinity, uh, looking for that one. He's actually found Rev here. Even Feral Affinity is going to be significant damage at this point. The Restoration Druid is soloing Rev. Loxatar looking to be the MVP. Heals reconnecting from Dingle though. Looks like he's duked him away for now. The Fire Mage reconnects. Ooh. Rev could die here. Maldix connect. That was a really nice interrupt from Rev. Only reason he's alive right now. Decent heals coming in once again. And Seth Curry has finally found his target. Rev in a lot of trouble. Can they take him down? Balamos no isn't going to be able to cap if they do. Rev is barely surviving. Life Cocoon comes in from Dingle. Saving the day once again with a Ring of Peace. Rev not completely out of it. He just can't get topped off. Baron's on top of him. They can get out of the damage. Scuba, Dingle, they do it. They manage to keep Rev alive, but a double ring of frost comes in with a double dragon's breath. Rev's still running and hiding for his life. He can't kite his healers for too long. Seth's all over him. If he can catch him in a stun, Rev does have a trinket. Officer traded out immediately. He got Haymaker on his trinket. Seth Curry, just insane plays. Rev still just planning to survive. Balebus in the meantime, also taking a little bit of pressure. How is he going to be able to survive? But I think it's Rev that is in the most trouble. I don't know if I should make more belief, more disbelief that Rev's staying alive. He does finally fall. Or that Balamos' team has actually got a 1-0 lead in this game. This entire game has been absolutely crazy, absolutely insane. Balamos died at the start of this play. That's what led up to all this. He died. Seth Curry somehow managed to pick up the flag, had an excellent trans transcendence portal positioning, managed to reconnect with Balamos. And I mean, I, I, they got away with murder there. Like, <laughs> I can't believe that Rev didn't manage to cap that flag. Somehow, ultimately, Balamos' team finds themselves one up in this series after a beautiful offensive push, finally taking down Rev. And I mean, this is where Balamos' team wants to be. They know that they're more than happy turtling out these situations. It takes about eight minutes for the flag uh, stacks to completely stack up. So there's no way that we will see a full uh, reset on those stacks, meaning that Balamos He's actually in a prime position here. Their turtle strategy uh, is going to see them through this game, assuming they can live it up to how they have in the previous games. Yeah, I mean, it's been... They've done a great job of it in the past, like you said, so it would be really surprising if they didn't end up being able to survive for this long. Honestly, just really well played there. That final offensive push where Baron Seth, they could get on top and take Rev down. I think that's the first time we've seen Rev fall, which is pretty crazy uh, in this yeah. matchup. Well, I'm also really proving us all wrong. He said this is the motivation that they needed. All of us kind of voted against him in this matchup, but they're proven they're still here to play. Yep, and I mean, winning this map would be uh, huge for them because, of course, Warsaw Gulch has been the map that they've struggled with the most. Uh, they've really only been going for this turtling strategy. I don't think they've actually got any flag kills against the majority of teams they've played against here. If they're able to win this one, they're going to have a huge lead in the series. Balamos showing why, you know, the name rings RBGs. You know, whenever you think of RBGs in North America, one of the first names you would always say is Balamos. And he's looking to prove it here why in the first 6v6 tournament of GCD TV 2019. Saps, though, Balamos caught in normal form right now. 
Might have to trade out the trinket. Looks like he should be okay. Trades out bark skin. Double DPS connecting Star Surge. My food camel is on fire right now. Has that incarnation active. Big damage, but then crowd controlled. CC'd on this trinket also. Nice place to shut down that incarnation. Yeah, Seth Curry on a one-man mission once again. Try to put some pressure on a rev. I love my dog taking some burst damage. Burnt and Varen. If they can get a kill, they do. They manage to find huge damage. Nicely done. That offense is going to get shut down now, but Lamas is going to be feeling relatively safe. I think, really, that Rogue is the most important tool on their team in order to take down Belamos. And with him gone, Belamos isn't going to be locked down. There's no threat of big kidney shots. Camel could easily fall as well. Belamos moving in, trying to take down Camel. And this is really looking good for Team Belamos. He's in a safe <laughs> position with Loxitar. I think they're just going to fully commit to a defensive strategy. Seth Curry just sitting on Dingle. Seth Curry is just... I don't know. He's He's been playing really well in this game. He always seems to be doing exactly what he needs to be doing in these matchups. You know, chasing down Rev, forcing Dingle to come back. When Dingle's finally trying to help out with the team, Seth Curry's all over him, shutting him down. And uh, I've just been really impressed with this play. Balamos is even... Uh, he actually made the play there to go over to the hut, pick up the Berserking and click it off. He doesn't want to take any chances in this game, not giving his opponent the opportunity to get that powerful buff that would enhance their damage. So Balamos, he just knows all the tricks on RBGs. He's been doing it for such a long time. He's not willing to let his veteran status forego him in this situation. Four minutes left on the timer. You can see that he still has the increased movement speed, meaning that he has less than five stacks at this moment in time. I think the stacks stack up every minute, so there's no way he'll get to 10 stacks. Uh, it's looking fantastic for him. He's over with Hamsham at this situation. I think Lockstar uh -oh. most likely uh, should be trying to get back to defense. He actually gets kidney shot far away, but they didn't opt to commit damage to that one. So both the healers will be able to reconnect over onto Balamos. Of course, in addition to that, you've got Burnt sitting in defense. You've got the Ring of Pieces. It's looking, I mean, a good situation. Balamos, though, once again gets caught in a stun outside of their form. Maybe he was trying to land a wild charge there, but no one was in line of sight. Infernals connect, though. Burns looking to clear out this off. Yeah, can he do it is the question. They've actually changed up their healing strategy, so Dingle is going to be the one that uh, manages to push in with the offense instead of Scuba. Scuba's going to be back defending Rev from Seth Curry. I don't know if that's necessarily the best pick. You'd think Scuba would be a better option for their offense to shut down Burn, shut down Baron, but it's Balamos is in a kitty shot. He's caught in the midfield right now. I love my dog. Back into the fight. Spen as well. If he has Serenity, Balamos could fall. It's a lot of pressure coming in. But Burns, he's been doing such a good job on that Destruction Warlock. He's getting massive counter pressure. It's just a really difficult situation to be in because you want to interrupt the healers so you can take down Balamos, but if you're not interrupting the Destro Warlock, you're just dead. And Rev is actually taking a surprising amount of damage as well. I really don't like the fact that Scuba and Dingle switched up roles in this match. It seems like Rev is just way more vulnerable. Dingle's not nearly as good at healing this, or, yeah, healing this offense and really shutting down some of the damage Burnt has available. I actually think this is just a really big mistake overall uh, from this team. I, I guess the only reason I can think they might have done it is because they think Dingle is a better offensive healer. Maybe he's playing uh, the Way of the Crane and they think that additional damage will help them, but it definitely doesn't look good in defense because Rev can't kite with Arrestor Shaman. He knows that the Arrestor Shaman will just get kited as well. And I mean, because of that, he's just tanking damage. Scuba's burned through his entire mana pool. <laughs> Seth Curry, when he has uptime, turns out he's quite a scary prospect. Uh, but maybe none of this will ever ever end up mattering because the offense did get wiped out. Balamos still has that one-point lead with two minutes left on this game, ladies and gentlemen. Balamos with the one-point lead. Their defense has been impeccable all tournament long, and they just need to title for two more minutes here, not even with maximum stacks. I think they're at seven stacks right now. And I mean, if they can do it for one more offensive push, they will win this game and have a fantastic lead heading into what could presumably be their grand final push. Yeah, I mean, winning the first game is definitely going to be comfortable for either one of these teams. The almost team doing it in style, and yeah, that last offensive push is definitely not a fan. Dingle was crowd controlled from start to finish. Varen burnt just spamming fear and polymorph over and over. He has no defense like Scuba does, so uh, I really want to see Scuba being the one that is going to be pushing in and playing offensive, but they're not going to be making that adaptation, and because of that, I just think it's so unlikely they actually push through and take down Belamos. Yep, it's definitely looking that way right now. They're setting up, they're posturing for this final push. Here comes the kidney shot. Balmos actually isn't in his optimum defensive position right now, and he's uh, sitting in the Urban Shield totem, so he's going to be kind of committing. He's actually walking out of his own Urban Shield totem here. 
uh, mm -hmm. from Hamsham because he'd rather get back into this room where we've seen him have so much success. Looks like uh, he's just kind of he's just kind of tanking through it. I don't know, like the damage isn't high enough. The gateway's been set up. Maybe he can walk over to his gateway to get that uphill position. Instead, just wild charges up there. There's no one up there to batch him. 30 seconds left on the timer. Balamos' team Ooh. will win. A nice knock, though. Big play coming in from my free camel. Typhoon and Balamos back down, but he didn't hit everyone. He didn't hit Hamstam, meaning that wild charge onto Hamstam is still an option for Balamos here. Yep, definitely. Balamos Ooh. getting sniped, though. Big burst damage. That's going to be the Spirit Link Totem, that lifeline coming in from Hamsham. He tricked it out of the Cyclone as well. They don't want to fall behind. There's 11 seconds left. They have to use everything. This is the moment. This is so close. With just 10 seconds left, they almost killed Balamos. I love my dog. He has to hold on. Two seconds. One second, and that is going to be it. Balamos team take the first map in the series. They're now up 1-0. Nice. For the Devies is the fact that they have a Restoration Shaman. I think the Restoration Shaman is going to be really, really key in this matchup to help shut down Varen, help, help shut down Burn. Otherwise, they would basically have free reign against this team. There really isn't too many ranged interrupts they have to deal with. But now that they brought in a Shaman, uh, it's going to be a little bit better. But like we kind of talked about, this map is all about the team fight at one node. You can commit one of your party members over and try to just tag one of the other nodes. If you can get away with that, if you can tag one of the nodes and then come back and help in the team fight, that can give you an edge and sort of forces the team to second guess, do we just sit at this node? Do we now commit someone to go contest that? What do you have to do? But it's a risky play to leave your team in a five versus six situation. Yeah, so I, I think one of the big things as well that we should note is that the way that the cart spawn uh, Horde most likely are going to commit one resource or one player to the water cart uh, just because it's closer to them and it's it's already quite close to capping when the game starts. So uh, Horde in this instance is going to be uh, Camel's team uh, with the Debbies. So the Debbies will have that slight advantage uh, of the first cart, but obviously the flip side of that is if they do commit that resource, Balamos' team are going to go all gun blazing into the 6v5 team fight which, I mean, will obviously give them an advantage. If they can win that fight and wipe out the Debbies, then most likely, you know, they're going to have a big advantage, not only on Lava, but also going into future cuts as well. Yeah, what's going on? Lava spawns water right now in the central minecart. Looks like Rev is going to quickly run over there and tag that. And like we kind of talked about for Horde, it is an advantage. If Rev just tags it, converts it, and runs back into the team fight, that's an ideal situation. But looks like he's not going to do that. He's going to just sit. Try to catch it up finally now. Going to be moving over. Camel getting low scuba as well. Team fight definitely going in favor of Balamos right now. Yeah, that is the disadvantage of uh, sending Rev over. Obviously, the payoff is very much worthwhile uh, as Rev does finally connect into the team fight. His team needs to recover from behind. Bink Dingle already had to trade out his trinket. See low health bars all over the side of, and actually a spirit link coming out as well, and a darkness, huge overlap there from Sko and Rev. That's the big raid cooldowns committed already on the side of the Debbies. Loxatar, meanwhile, taking a bit of damage, but greater pyros are connecting over onto Sko. Full blind onto Camel on his incarnation. No damage coming in from him. Sko so low on health, no spirit link available. Barely gets away with his life. Yeah, burned his landing. Chaos Bolt after Chaos Bolt. Finally, that gets shut down just a little bit by Camel, but I love my rogue. He gets caught into a stun. He's going to be taken down. You can see now side luckily for them they did manage to take that first node at the central point but it looks like alliance will convert and team belamos will be able to catch up taking cart number two now finally the top card spawns rev immediately takes a good positioning by him now he's going to be slowly getting this money we kind of talked about another really important part of this map is split resing now that i love my dog has spawned on rogue if they can take down dingle really really quickly it's going to be huge another split team fight and this is kind of disastrous right now uh, for the Debbies. They're just in a situation where they're mound down once again and having that be a healer is just a huge disadvantage. Yeah, they're being a bit tricky, you know, like Rev has been doing a fantastic job. I honestly think he's been one of the MVPs for this Debbies lineup throughout the entire day, uh, play, putting out plays. And he's been the one picking up these off cuts for them, which has been seeing them get advantages. But Balamos' team has been completely annihilating the team fights. Like, we have set something off inside this team here by predicting against them. They're looking like a 
completely different roster, absolutely destroying the Debbies in every single team fight right now. We see split reses, we see deaths galore. I don't think we've seen a single person die yet on the side of Balamos. And this water cart will cap first. The water cart is closer to capping. It's a shorter cap path than the top one. So they're going to have the edge on lava when it spawns as well. The things are definitely starting to steam ahead in favor of Balamos. Yeah, I, I think that's certainly true, but they're still behind at this point. I mean, they do have a lead, or they don't have a lead. They're getting more kills, that's for sure. But I think with the positioning Revs had where he's picking up these carts, these off carts that are spawning, look, they have top. It's just going to ship. Eventually, it's guaranteed points. Now they can get into a team fight situation, which they have been losing, but they're still winning. Like, they're still ahead on points, so it's not too bad. I think it's kind of a dangerous game when you're just throwing party members down um, in these team fights at sort of a disadvantage. Rev's just going to be playing the midfield once again, potentially trying to pick up the newly spawned cart. If it does happen, I just want to make sure he's not going to lose that investment of that top cart as it's unlikely they can really contest the central node at this point. Team Bell almost easily clean them up. Yep, so it will be another one-for-one -one trade. The uh, central cart won easily by Balamos and they, like I said, they do have the slight time edge on that as well. So they're already starting to reposition here, take control of center once again for the new lava cart. As it spawns, you can see Seth Curry and Hamsham already uh, there to cap that as soon as it spawns. Uh, that said, actually it does end up going over to the Horde here. More bodies committed from the Debbies, nicely positioning. Uh, nice positioning from them. I guess that's one of the advantages if you have like a full team of melees is that you can just have your team constantly inside the cart whereas these casters burn and they're in whilst they're trying to set up their greater powers and chaos bolts. They're doing it from further away so uh, you know whilst he's casting that greater power you can see Varen right now he's actually leaving the cart passively as it moves away from him so uh, the positioning they've got to be very careful about it. Rev once again instantly caps that water cart in favor of his team and that's where these little advantages coming from the debbies rev always even if his team loses the team fight he's making sure he's first those carts getting those little you know five or ten point advantages and it's starting to add up already 50 points between the teams yeah i mean it's definitely starting to add up and actually this node's going to get converted and now the debbies they're in a situation where they have both carts in their favor i don't even know how did that happen uh, look Very at the crowd control. Yeah, like, the crowd both control is the too good. range oh. are just, they're never in the car. Yeah, they're just completely knocked out. They need to get deeper into this node because at this point, it's going to be a two cart advantage for the team of the Debbies. This is a little bit of a disaster for Team Belamos. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're winning the team fights, but that's not the only objective here. This isn't arena. Like in RBGs, winning the team fights is only part of the battle. You've also got to make sure you're converting that into objectives. And the Debbies here, if they can get two cards, that's going to be absolutely huge. Full resources being committed by Balamos's team. All of these cool tier and racials, that really seems to be the ultimate race since we do have, you know, tournament server. All these teams can play whatever racial they want. All those cool tier and knocks coming out, knocking people, punting them out of the carts. Debbie's convert one cap. Looks like they're going to be able to convert water here as well and now have a huge lead. They're just owning Team Bell almost. Like we said, they kind of were losing the team fights, but in terms of positioning and their map awareness, it just seems like they are a cut above the rest. Rev going to be completely defending right now that central point and that will cap over. Now this is a good situation for Team Bell almost to try to get a kill, but Bell almost gets caught in a stun. He could easily fall here. There's a lot of burst damage coming in from the Debbies. Almost is catching some big heals from Hamsham, from Loxitar in order to survive a beautiful leg sweep coming in from Seth, clipping everyone on the enemy team. And that will keep his team alive. She's trying to push in, but Horde, you know, the Debbies, it looks like they're going to be able to hold on to this cart. Yep. And Rev, once again, look at Rev. Oh, that was so nice. He prison bail almost right out of the circle and just jacked it right in front of his eyes. <laughs> he had no trinket. That was just beautifully done once again rev honestly mvp of the series it's insane yeah rev has been playing absolutely crazy he has complete advantage over the rogue too because he has the sh the spectral side he just sees balamos coming stuns it nicks it from under him poor poor balamos here that's if anything's gonna make him more mad than our prediction i feel like it's something like that but i feel like the demon hunter also is gonna have a complete advantage against the subtlety rogue there's no way that a subtlety rogue can kill a demon hunter 1v1 uh, Rev's going to be completely content to take this uh, into a 1v1 situation. That said, Dingle does end up falling in the 5v5 team fight up top. So, Balamos' team have flipped that cart. They now have a small advantage. Ham Sham is starting to peel off. They're looking to try regain center as it looks like both teams 
uh, have stopped contesting that one. They're going to give it over to Balamos. But as long as Lava stays in favor here, they're actually going to go try to get the Lava. If they can get the double cap here, this will put Balamos way back in the series. They did it. That was really nicely done. Beautiful crowd control on Loxitar. Unfortunately, or on Spen, pardon me. The other crowd control on Spen. And because of that, they were able to get more members in. Really nicely done converting these two notes. So this is the perfect opportunity for them to play catch up in this game. I don't have to see. They Top is going to get capped. Ooh, I love my rogue. Is I love my rogue going to be able to ninja? I don't, I don't think so. Varen's actually defending over there. So it's a lot happening over on the other side of the map right now. Looks like Lava will be it going towards the lines. Up top, there's a Druid there as well. Varen is up there, but this could actually be a ninja. I don't think they, they might, they're going to get it, I think. They're going to get it back. Out, but there's a 2v1. There's so much time on the car. I actually think they've got this for sure. The yeah, Debbie's coming up. Varen is dipped, yeah. He doesn't want yep. to have anything to do with that. He's <laughs> out. Yeah, he doesn't love his rogue, so he's going to be out of there instantly. That means it's actually a one-for-one -one trade, and with such an advantage already on points, the Debbie's really needed that. That was Balamos' ticket back into this game here, and now the Debbie's able to shut that out. I was I was saying like the, the macro play there from Balamos was absolutely insane. You know, they won the card, they flipped it back over, won Lava as well, it was looking great, but the counter play, they weren't ready for it. The additional stealth members on the Debbie's not accounted for. And Burn actually left that card. If Burn had stayed, I feel like they would have held that. So maybe a slight mistake uh, from Burn X there. Now we're once again finding the Debbies far, far ahead. Somehow Balamos needs to win two cards on one of these trades. Yeah, Burn 14. Balamos is defending right now, and he's just been such a heavy hitter in the team fights. Uh, when these teams do go head to head, he needs to sort of abandon his post and come help out because this fight at Lava is going to mean a lot. All it's basically going to be an all-out slug vest. But it's not the worst position um, for Team Balamos to be. It's actually the best position they could be in. They fight right now. The team fight doesn't really matter if they lose. Well, it does matter because Horde is winning. But um, <laughs> they have that off card <laughs> going their way. That's the one thing they do have going for them. So this is going to be a team fight. They definitely need to win. Yep, and they're looking. They're looking good right now. They have actually. I think they. They have like maybe a mana advantage. I think they have one extra person here, but everyone's doing a good job of staying inside. Spen actually gets crowd control outside. A nice kidney shot coming in from Balamos, just securing his team uh, the advantage here. We see it is looking like it's most likely just going to be another one for one trade. Both these caps will happen at the exact same time here. So watch Rev. Is Rev already peeling off? You can see he's going for it. The ring of pieces are coming in though. The actual, the ride, the wind from Seth Curry helping Balamos's entire team reconnect to these cards, but a beautiful route coming in from Sko. The uh, triple earth grab, I think that was, uh, means that he's actually first into the car. Hamsham gets it, double oh horde connection both. here. This is really good for the Debbies. They already have a massive lead. I think one more cap will probably do it. 150 points for a cap, plus the residual points from these carts. Even the top flag, the fact that they have that already before they go to this team fight is huge. Yeah, I mean, they could literally just sit on the top card at this point in the game and they just win. I'm pretty sure that's just the winning strategy, but they're going to be going for it. They're going to be really committing, keeping the pressure up against Team Balamos, keeping them sort of on the back foot in this matchup as the top card marches its way towards the end. So a little bit away. This Lava will certainly cap first, so this team fight is going to be really, really important. We have to see Team Balamos hold on. Maybe one of them sort of escape. Look at Hamsham. He's actually, he's going to go do it. He's going to go convert top for the Alliance. And now we'll have to see if they can win this team fight. I think it's unlikely at this point. It is a five versus six situation. Hamsham just positioned so far away. If they can hold on to this note, this would be such a miraculous comeback. Yeah, Hamsham actually, he, he, he didn't really commit to the play. He didn't actually fully cap the note. Now he's had to go all the way back. Oh, no. He is capping it now for the team. So he has capped it for the Alliance now, but it's such a long time that he's been away. If Horde can cap this Lava card, I'm not sure if they're able to do it. It looks like they should. Hamsham was away for so long. It's just about putting bodies in the car. They have six bodies versus five. They can hold this. They will be about 40 points away from winning the entire game. It's looking so good for them. Hamsham went for a risky pay and it has not paid off in this situation the payload delivers for the debbies 40 points is now the name of the game for them meanwhile balamos's team needs over 600. yeah that's a lot of points <laughs> that's a lot of points that's a lot of points spen's going to be converting the central node right now and if that's for the horde i think those residual points as long as they can hold on tight uh that will be enough for them to win once uh top converts actually rev's going to go ninja is he going to get it 
Rev's just crossing the map. This would be really big for his team. If they get that, the game is just 100% over. Rev just sitting there. He's having fun. They get it. Ford, two cards to none. 25 points away from closing out this game. And it uh, looks like they want to tie up the series. Yeah, I mean, it, this was just a clean game from uh, the entirety of the Davies. They played it fantastically. I think they really abused Burnex in particular on that Destro Warlock. Like, him and Virion, they both have to stand there and cast for such a long time. They're just getting constantly punted out of the cart by the Cool Tyrants, rooted everything. They don't have the mobility that the melees have. It was just such clean execution from the Debbies. And then Ham Sham not converting that card and spending so much the, time. Yeah. That was that was really the kind of final nail in the coffin at the end there. Uh, defend on this map, and then it uh, gives a lot of freedom to the team of. Wait, what's so funny? <laughs> gives a lot of freedom to. Um, uh, I love my dog and Rev to sort of maneuver around the map on the rogue and sort of keep the enemy team guessing, and that really has been one of the strengths. I mean, you can see with Camel, I love my dog, Rev having three DPS that can be in stealth. It's basically hiding what moves you're going to be making next. And uh, I think Belamos, you're going to have to do a really good job making sure uh, they're tracking those players. Yeah, I mean, whether however you want to pronounce Balamos, like he said himself, uh, every single language recognizes the word leader. And Balamos has always been the leader throughout RBG communities in North America. He will probably be the one shot calling these two rogues and druid on the side of the Debbies as they look to cause mischief get ninja caps over on the mines potentially. Balamos has done a good job so far in previous series on this map of holding his own even in 1v2 situations. But I love my dog and Rev Rogue, they've also done a good job of ninjing. I don't think these two teams have met prior to the series, so it's going to be a jolly good show if they do go for that. Obviously at the start, the main fight will be over Waterworks. Actually, it's, it's, it's a lot of trickery going on. There's only two people for each team currently committing to this fight as the rogues are yet to reveal themselves. They don't really want to give away their position right now. Sven is in defense right now, getting sapped up. So one rogue reveals himself a little bit. That's Balamos sitting in the back line with Sven actually committing over there. Uh, that's gonna force Burn back into defense. It's really interesting strategy coming in from Debbie early on. Sven, this is really weird to me. We have Rev moving forward, and then I love my dog peeling back to defend. I don't know, they just traded places. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why that just happened, but yes, I love my dog. He's more confident in this 1v1 versus Seth Curry. Seth Curry moving in. This is what I talked about. The Windwalker Monk is going to be able to do a really good job um, in these 1v1 situations. You can actually see this is something that might be important later on if we end up where nobody caps a base at this point. Right now, the Alliance is actually slightly ahead, which mm. is it could end up dictating the whole game. Yeah, I mean, that, that, normally we see these teams cap perfectly in sync. I'm wondering maybe if uh, one of the members used some more movement mobility to get over. Actually, really good cross crowd control coming in from Vern. He CC'd both the members. Scuba had to trinket to deny the ninja cap from Hamsham. That would have been a sick play if they could have actually capped the base in the 2v2 situation. And that is one of the potentials of the mage. You know, like you have the Ring of Frost, you have the Polymorph. They already force out one trinket. Now it looks like they're going for the inverse play, but first it's going to happily trink it out. Uh, the 2v2, I actually kind of like it from the Debbies. They're trying to cause a little bit of chaos, I think, in the comms from Balamos' team right now. But so far, Balamos' team's been matching them. Yeah, you have to keep the leader distracted. Like you said, if Balamos can make the plays, then it's going to be difficult for the team. But if you keep him distracted enough in this matchup, focus him to, or force him to focus on this sort of 2v2 setup, maybe that's what you need to sort of break that leadership. I'm not sure. Good crowd control coming in right now. From the Debbies, they managed to get a kill on I Love My Dog. He's going to be taken down I, I, the White House in a 2v2 situation. Now South Korean Burn, they're actually doing a good job. Dingo's going to try to defend, but if they can get a full fear on him, they might be able to cap Lighthouse. Yeah, I, I actually think Seth Curry might have soloed I Love My Dog 1v1 at Lighthouse. And now Dingo has resurrected and he's come back to defend, but he's, he's too late. I mean, Burn's going to get these Chaos Pods. They might actually get the kill here. Full counter spell Ooh. as they look to get the kill. Seth Curry actually says, leaps into range. Dingle will fall. Ooh, I, I love my, my rogue. He's trying to get back. I don't know if he's going to make it in time. Seth Curry's oh, going to nice. deny him. What a play. Seth Curry MVP at the start of this one as Burn picks up the first flag. Oh, Team Bale almost. They got to be pleased with this one. They're up two or one and a converted node over uh, against zero of the Debbies, unfortunately for them. And still, we can see Waterworks in contention at this point. They're almost going to have to defend against Spen uh, and Rev. 
at this point, but we've seen him do it before. We've seen him being able to defend Loxitar. He's almost in a good position. If they can just hold on to these two nodes, they will win the game, but they're doing a great job also just denying any cap at Waterworks. It's really, really important, and so far, Horde is just going to be inching further and further towards victory in the Alliance. They're, they're just stagnant at this point. They don't have any points going their way. This is kind of disastrous for the Debbies. Seth Curry, what a player. This guy, like, he wins the 1v1 again. And that was the looming threat against Milk, I remember, last time uh, that Balamos' team ran on this map and ended up beating Dadakus. Now they have two bases off of his play. They were able to get the kill through Dingle, through everything. The Alliance are yet to cap a single base encounter to this play from Balamos's team. The points are racking up two to zero base advantage, and that will add up very quickly. The Alliance obviously losing out. Hamsham falls though, as they will most likely uh, counter with a pick on Waterworks here. It's only uh, Vern left over on this Fire Mage. He's probably either going to get CC'd or killed most likely in the near future. Um, but members are peeling in. It's getting, I mean, it's getting close. Like the longer they can get this, the full blind comes out. Actually, the Rogue is able to get back now. I feel like they should just kill off Vern. Like at this point, you've won the fight. Don't go for the crowd control. Like if people keep snowballing in, but they do manage to get the cap just about. So it will be a two to one lead in favor of Balamos. But the onus is still very much on the Debbies if they are to convert this game into victory. This is an elimination series. Yeah, Team Balamos, they just have to play really, really defensive in this situation. Make sure they always have at least two defenders at a node. Really reduce the amount of um, opportunities there are to ninja cap in this matchup. Loxitar could get picked off here. His stock Rev is going to be defending for the team of the Debbies as they try to make a play happen. But when you're this far behind, it's a really difficult situation to come back from. And you, you kind of are forced to make risky plays. You might end up seeing Rev get off of defense, try to move forward, look for a ninja cap, try to win the numbers game. But I think if they just sit back, they play it passive, only try to win with five members. I just I don't know if they're going to be able to take one of these caps away in a team fight. Yeah, it's definitely a difficult situation to be in. That said, if you were going to try and get a ninja cap, like the, this would be the competition to do it. You've got the double rogue, you've got the uh, moonkin druid. So there's a lot of stealth opportunities. Balamos is really going to have to lead his team here doesn't have his trinket right now, so that could be a potential opening for a ninja cap if they can catch him off guard later on. There's a little bit of a skirmish going on at the lighthouse right now. Seems like both teams are equally matched in terms of resources. We've got Hamsham coming back. I love my dog is posturing in stealth right now. I'd actually maybe like to see him go for a play at mines. He's actually going to blind up Hamsham and commit to this fight, though. They want to win this one here at lighthouse. It's probably the the better place for them to be fighting since it's nearer to their spawns. We see a smoke bomb play coming out, but I actually think that Spurn might have preemptively got the uh, got the uh, Fist of Fury there on the kidney shot, so maybe a nice play from him. Uh, mm -hmm. Loxitar taking a little bit of damage, running back, getting the gate, though. It, it feels like this is a just kind of like it's stalling from Balamos' team. Like They know they win the longer this game goes on, and like the onus is really on these rogues to create some sort of play, and so far they've been unable to find it. Yeah, Rev, he needs to do something. Like I said, I, I don't think playing it safe is going to bank them a win. I think they have to make some sort of risky play at this point. They're going to be peeling off of Lighthouse. It seems like Team Belamos, they're easily able to defend at this point. Actually, maybe not. If Lockstar falls, it's going to be dangerous. Balamos actually needs a little bit of backup at this point. Hamsham trying desperately to get back in range. He needs to keep Lockstar alive. To see if he's able to do a burn with beautiful peels. Balamos keeping the flag nice and clean. Scuba trying to look for some ninjas, but that easily gets shut down. They're almost all over it. He does not want to throw away the series. You can see Rev on Rogue. He's going to be moving forward. They've actually decided to bench one of the healers. So Dingle's going to be defending. Rev is going to be moving forward, looking for a kill. They need more damage. I don't blame them for trying to make this play. I think with the way the battle was playing out, where it's sort of two healers, two DPS versus two healers, three DPS, it's really difficult to land a kill, so I think you have to switch it up. You have to bring in more damage, and you have to try to get a play. Yeah, I think this is really smart. And obviously, the way that Balamos has set up his defense is he's got Vern and Seth Curry sitting back right now. So those are two big damage dealers. And as soon as the second row commits, you can see the shot call comes in. Seth, you're safe to go. Vern can solo defend. Both rogues are here at Lighthouse. Incredible play, incredible shot calling from Balamos's team. And now the odds are going to be evened up. Once again, as soon as Seth Curry enters that fight, 
You've just got the feeling that his team won't die. That said, uh -oh. Smoke Bomb comes in. They get the kill onto Hamsham. Big play here. If Loxitar falls as well, they will be in trouble. I love my dog low, but Scuba shouldn't have any difficulty keeping him alive. Loxitar already low on mana as well. I actually think Hamsham dying there could be a big momentum shift. They're trying to ninja the base, the healer's job, Scuba, to force the issue with that one. Now they're going for the kill on Burn. CC over onto Loxitar, but here comes the kidney shot. This could be scary times for the Druid. Yeah, I mean, there's no question about it. There's a lot of pressure on him right now. Hamsham has crossed the map. Baron is getting sapped out. Rev, he's kind of revealed his position. I don't know if I necessarily like that. He's trying to just slow down Baron from rotating, but now they know where he is. Baron's going to be able to move forward, and I think at this point, Bielanos knows he's probably going to have to 1v1 a rogue to defend. Rev actually revealing himself coming back. They're really committing to Lighthouse. They have to get a kill here. Infernals gets dropped out by Burn. He completely whiffs it, unfortunately. doesn't manage to land that stun, but still will get the bonus damage. Camel barely surviving. Varen looking for Greater Power Blast. Does manage to take down the Camel. He's gonna, yep, the Greater Power Blast hits. He will fall, and they might actually be able to hold on to this node after all. Things are just looking so good. At this point, I think one node wins yeah. the game for <laughs> so... Uh, I think it's pretty much over for the Debbies at this mo moment. Yeah, they need a three cap right now. There's only 300 points on the board for the Debbies, and there's only 300 points remaining for the victory here of Balamos. He is so close to winning this game, winning this series, eliminating the Debbies from the first 6v6 tournament of the GCD TV series 2019. Even at Lighthouse, it seems like they're not going to be able to get it. Camel dying. Scuba now looking like he'll fall in the Mighty Bash. Does end up doing so with Dingle, obviously, set to defense. I, f I feel like they could have, you know, maybe they just needed to throw all six players at the offense. Like Dingle defending. Even if you lose the base now, I mean, it's, it's GG either way. 200 points left on the board for Balamos. And I mean, you were right, man. Like, we, 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 did, we did what we needed to do as casters and Balamos. Uh, he, he, like, I, this was incredible shot calling. Like, you could just tell the way that they were tracking the rogues. Seth Curry got optimum use in this game, and I mean, I shouldn't have bet against him. I said I, I said I shouldn't, and then I did anyway. So there you go. Yeah. I, I just feel like on the, this is their map. Like I just feel like this is such a good map for the way they play it. Bailamos or Bailamos does a really good job with his defense. Seth Curry creating massive opportunities. Honestly, Seth Curry was probably MVP of this game. With, you know opening up Lighthouse, getting that kill onto I Love My Dog, and then a beautiful ring of peace denying I Love My Dog in stealth, running in to stop the cap. And just those kind of plays, Just you just need one good play like that, two good plays, and that's what pulls you ahead. On this map, once you fall behind on two nodes, it's really difficult to catch back up in a 66 situation, especially when you're playing against a team as well coordinated as Team Bailamos. Yep. Well, there you go. We have our go. finals.